Turn to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 53. Isaiah is a mini Bible. It has 66 chapters. So much. The whole book is about Jesus. Who hath believed our report? 53rd chapter. <clears throat> and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Now, if you walk across, if you came across Jesus as a young man, and uh, you see him, well, of course, uh, of course he's a good looking man, but not, you know, ah, uh, no, you wouldn't pick him out as being some sort of special, specially good look. No, he's just a good looking man. He is despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrow. Now, that word in Hebrew is actually pain. The King James translated it sorrow. Well, pain can be sorrow and grief. Acquainted with grief, that Hebrew word is disease. Plain and simple. Surely he hath borne our griefs or sicknesses. But now, you can come against grief with that scripture just the same as you can sickness. I've done it. Carried our pain, we did esteem him smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now, that was an exceeding great and precious promise. God has always been a healing God. Always. Always, 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 always. Go to Acts chapter 1, and then we'll go to 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 8, You shall receive power, dunamis, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. When he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, two men stood by in white apparel, which also said, You men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner, and you shall, you have seen him go into heaven. Say it. This same Jesus. This same Jesus. Well, while we're here, Acts chapter 10. Now, this is 10 years later. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. Now, I've said this before, maybe some of you were not here. Of Caesarea. Well, just check it out, find out where Caesarea is and was. It's just right there, a pilot was from that same area. There was, there was not but one centurion. The same one, he was a wealthy man, he had at least a hundred men under him. He, he was a, a, a field grade officer in the Roman army. He's the one that built the synagogue in Capernaum where Jairus was the leader and where Jesus went to synagogue when he was home in Capernaum. I call that going widescreen. <laughs> 
Anyway, a devout man, one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day and the angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. And he told him what to do. You get Peter over here and he'll tell you. Now listen. He knew Peter. Isn't that good? He knew exactly who he was. He was always with Jesus all the time, and he was the big man. He was Peter, James, and John. He knew who he was. Knew him by name. And he said, get him over here, and he'll do the preaching. Angels don't preach. It's men. It's people. Men and women. Preach this God. So, Peter, and he was wise enough to take some witnesses with him because he wasn't even supposed to be in that Gentile's house. <laughs> so, he took those with him. And, and you know what happened. I mean, while Peter was preaching, the power of God, the Spirit of God fell on him. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted of him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how? God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with dunamis. That's Acts chapter 1. Power. Dynamin. We get our word dynamite from it. Huh. That's dynamite living on the inside of you. Getting ready to explode into healing and miracles. <laughs> Glory to God. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing. He went about doing good and healing. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Well, God is with us. And a manifestation of Jesus by his spirit is here, and he's there today, and he is with us, and he's doing the same thing today because it's this same Jesus. It is this same Jesus. It is the same spirit. It is the same power. It is the same dynamite, self-energizing, explosive power of healing and miracles. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that power is here right now in the form of the spirit of God. And if you don't know Jesus as your Lord, that's the easiest thing you ever did in your life. Jesus, come into my heart. Thank you. The shortest salvation prayer on record was Saul of Tarsus on the way to Damascus. And Jesus just knocked him to the ground. And he said, Lord, who are you? <laughs> Lord, who are you? Thank you, Jesus. I've seen all kinds and heard all kinds of prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Lord, who are you? I know who you are. You're the healer. I know who you are. You're the savior. I know who you are. You're the baptizer in the spirit. I know who you are. You're the one that made me a new creature. I know who you are. And he knows who I am. And he knows who you are. Glory to God. The easiest thing you ever did is receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And I've told this before that Gloria and I accepted Jesus. She was in October, and I was in the uh, week, first week of November of 1962. And, and we didn't know anything. And in 1963, we went into a meeting that was, that was a Christian Medical Foundation by, that was started by William Standish Reed. And we just went over there and they gave an invitation. I turned around and asked my mother, I said, is this something we ought to have? She said, yeah, I grabbed Gloria with the hand up there we went. So no more English. Well, I had to fly back that night. It's January and it's cold and it's clear and airplanes like cold weather. And I climbed up to... I don't remember what the altitude was, five, six, seven thousand feet, whatever it was. And I was just flying along that. That little airplane, his little trainer airplane, didn't have any autopilot. I was sitting there with my hand on the yoke. And I said, Lord, I don't know what all I know about that. But I'm going to say some of those words again. You have never heard anybody raised in Pentecost that would dare do that. That's the reason some of them went 30 years without it. I didn't know any better. Jesus is the gift to the world. The Holy Spirit is the gift to the church. And Jesus said, you will receive power. You go to Jerusalem and don't you do anything until you do. Well, you need to go to Sacramento and don't do anything until you do. And so I was flying along that little airplane and I just thought of one of those words and started in. I said, oh, here it is. <laughs> and then I had to call my approach control. And, I thought, and I'm, I'm thinking at the same time. And I thought, oh, Lord, I'm going to have to call these people. <laughs> you're going to have to do something with me or you're going to have to fix their ears. One of the way I, I got to call these people. And I said, Little Rock approach control. I thought, hey, that worked. <laughs> and it'll work for you. Easiest thing you ever did in your life, all you have to do is yield. That's right. <laughs> First Peter 2. Thank you, Jesus. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. Now, anyone in here with any malice, lay it aside. All guile. What is guile? Deceitfulness. If you can think of anything uh, that you was de the least bit deceitful, hey, repent. Hypocrisies. What does hypocrite Have you ever seen the theater masks? One is the mask of joy and the other is a mask of sadness. That's what hypocrite means. Putting on a phony mask. Pretending to be something you are not. Or pretending you are not something you know you are. Well, deal with it. <laughs> so, oh yeah well, oh Lord that's me I repent I'm not going to be sad anymore <laughs> I'm not going to be depressed anymore and I quote Gloria depression comes from thinking about yourself all the time Amen. and thinking about yourself all the time would depress anybody <laughs> Gloria said that. <laughs> no, that's true. So, putting on a mask. Nope, can't do that. 
Oh, glory to God. As newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Well, I do desire, hey, we're beyond the milk of the word because we, we, are, we are growing through adolescence in the, uh, in the fifth chapter of Hebrews. He talks about full. When you should have been teachers by now, but now by exercise, you become adult and skillful in the word of righteousness. All right, now, and that was, that was the 23rd verse of that first paragraph. Now, come on back down here. If so, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming is unto a living stone, and so forth. Now, you also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to the God. Okay, let's just do that. Lord, we just lift up sacrifice and holy praise unto you. Just, just begin to praise him right now. A praise sacrifice. Oh, glory to God. A, a praise sacrifice. Glory to God. Acceptable God, wherefore also it's contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believes on him shall not be confounded. Oh, Lord, that's me. Say it. Lord, that's me. That is me. Unto you, therefore, which shall believe he is precious, but unto them that be disobedient, the stone, which, and so forth, number, verse 8, and a stone of stumbling and rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word. And you read all of these things. Verse 13, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, for the Lord's sake, for the Lord's sake, for the Lord's sake sake, unto, uh, to governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with, with well-doing you may be put to silence the ignorance and foolish men as free and so forth. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear or reverence, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward, or in other words, proper respect. This is thankworthy if a man of conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. And you go all the way down to these things and you take care of all of that and you straighten things out between you and any other thing that is hindrance to your health and, and your thinking and, and praise and respect to politicians. They're there, we're here. Amen. Amen. And like I said before, in a lot of cases, and, and more than, than, than others, you just have to pray what Jesus prayed. Forgive them. They don't know what to do. Because you, you leave your hometown and you go to Washington, D.C., and all of a sudden you get banged into the wicked spirits in the heavenlies. And we see that in the book of Daniel. And then they do and say things that they said they would not do when they were campaigning. Well, listen, that's a tough thing. I mean, politics is a contact sport. <laughs> it's nasty. Always has been. Somebody said this nation is not just. It is as just as it possibly can be, and it's still the most just nation on earth. Amen. Amen. Now, what does that have to do with healing? Everything. Don't get upset. Don't let it get you all stirred up. I don't like that. Well, nobody puts you in that office. You can like or dislike it. But settle down. You're not ready. You're not ready to receive healing yet. You're all upset. You can believe it and all that, but your, your body is not hearing it because it has, our healing is not on the outside. It has to come up inside here. In the first covenant, it had to come from the outside because they were not born again people. Righteousness had been 
accounted to them. Jesus was made the sacrificial lamb and took our place. We've been made the righteousness of God in him. It's always in him. He is our healer in us. And you have to remember in 1 Peter 2, there's 23 verses before you get to 24. Then, and finally, down there, it, next to the last verse in the chapter, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live under righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Brother Copeland, Richard here has been a partner for over 30 years. During the service today, he's had severe pain in his shoulder. He was just telling me he couldn't even move his arm back. And now, Richard, what's going on? Go back with a back brush and brush, you know, just scratch, get my back cleaned. It hurt so much. And I, and when I raised my hand, it hurt. But I just said, thank you, Lord. I, I, I'm healed, you know. I already know the word. And so I'm healed. And, and when I'm sitting there, I could go clear back like this. <laughs> try a little pain's trying to bother me now, but it's a lie, you know. Praise know. God forevermore. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Forevermore. Right, this is Carla from Elk Grove, and she came in today with swelling in her lower legs and ankles and completely gone. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. How long did you have the pain? It's been there for the last three days. And right now? It's gone. Come on, go, go take a cross. <laughs> <laughs> This is Judy from Fair Oaks, and she said that she started receiving her healing today in her hands. Her hands haven't been able to pop in five years from arthritis, <laughs> and she got some healing from her lungs from long-term COVID symptoms the doctors Praise diagnosed God. her with. Hallelujah. Thank you, Gene. <laughs> Why don't you squeeze my hand? Let me see how tight. Ow. Well, yeah, there you go. And you can breathe in. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Brother Copeland, you said something about that. Breathe it in. Wow. Yes. And it worked. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and it worked. Praise God. That okay. is so good. Glory to God. The world system is unstable, but God's faith system is reliable and has all your needs covered. Length of days and years of a life worth living come from God. In How to Get Well, Stay Well, and Enjoy Life, Gloria Copeland explains how faith works for you and spells out what Scripture says about health and wholeness. The more you know the Word, the freer you are and the more joy you have. The Bible is very clear that God's plan for you is wholeness in every area, spirit, soul, and body. Take authority over your life, over your body and health. Speak the Word. Jesus is the beginner and finisher of your faith. He doesn't start things that He won't complete. Faith takes what is promised in the Word and doesn't let go. Consistency is the key to receiving everything that God has for you. The moment you pray, believe you have received your wholeness and deliverance, and the Bible promises that you will have what you need and more. God promises every good thing in His Word. Be sure to request your free How to Get Well, Stay Well, and Enjoy Life series from Kenneth Copeland Ministries at kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Use your faith to take the good health and total well-being God declares belong to you. Offer is good for 60 days. Outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Hello, I'm Spencer Nordyke. When Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life, you have the assurance of a covenant with God. That includes eternal life, healing, prosperity, peace, protection, even when the storms of life come you can live on the victory side. Because of your covenant with God gives you access to everything you need, Jesus did all the hard part to defeat the curse and to put you in a place of victory. Your part is simply to receive Him into your heart. Let me lead you in this prayer. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. 
Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of every sin. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I invite you to transform me into your image. Fill me, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. I receive all that you have for me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. That prayer changed everything for you. Your spirit is born again now and you've become part of God's family. You have the faith and the love of God living in you right now. You have a covenant with God that includes everything good and covers all that you need. To help you with the next steps in your walk with God, KCM has some free resources to give you. It's called The Salvation Package, and it includes a book called He Did It All For You by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and two brochures to help you start reading and studying your Bible. Request your Salvation Package today, free on kcm.org. And while you're online, you'll find videos and articles on topics that are important to you so you can let the Word of God renew your mind and you can feed your spirit with the truth. Brother Copeland calls KCM.org your study center. It's a place where you can study the Word and spend time watching, listening, and reading faith-based content. When you find something you like, share it with your family and friends. You can also read KCM's daily devotional online called From Faith to Faith. It's a daily encouragement from the Word of God shared by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. You can also sign up to have the devotional sent to your email every morning so you can start your day in God's Word. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, this is Spencer Nordic reminding you that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have a gift for you. It is called the Salvation Package. Learn about the new birth and how you can live your new life victoriously in Christ. Receive your free package on kcm.org salvation. Keep your heart full of God's Word and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice, and it is the voice of victory. Prepare for your future in life and in ministry at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Apply yourself practically to ministry through class electives designed to develop your gifts. Get equipped for your calling, enter into your mission field confidently, and teach others to do the same. Graduate as an available voice to carry the legacy of faith into your life and ministry. To find out more, go to kcbiblecollege.org. Apply today.